like God done for real blessed me for real for That's real. True. Like, he done took his time on me, like really blessed me, like gave me all the gifts that I can even imagine. Right. So I'm like, if I don't, if I don't do my part, like to the fullest that I can do it, I'm talking about work hard, right? Like yeah. give it everything I got. I feel like I'm cheating him. Mm. I feel like. I feel like I'm I'm letting him down. Like I'm cheating him. If I don't if, if I don't develop all the gifts he done given me into into like elite skills and be one of the best, I'm cheating. Him. Alrighty guys, welcome back to Keep Side Takes for our final show of the year. And on today's show, I got my guy Matthew Owens, play-by-play -play announcer. He's going to help us break down the college football playoff games. We're going to predict, predict all the NFL games. And to close out the show, we're going to talk about our sports moment of the year. Uh, so Matthew, my brother, how you doing today? I am very well. Thank you for having me. Um yeah, uh, Christmas in the rearview mirror, New Year's coming up. Uh, hard to believe, 2023, almost here. Yes, did you have a good Christmas, brother? I did. Uh, I, I hope you did. Uh, yes, I, yes, indeed. I, yes, I, I had a had a very good Christmas, a lot of time with family, which is always a blessing. You know, our, uh, our families, you know, our families drive us crazy. <laughs> everybody's everybody's family drives everyone crazy but it's a blessing to spend time with them in the holiday season so uh yes, yes. <laughs> great great christmas and uh here we go here we go this is such an exciting time uh, you know for sports fans just for humankind closing the book on uh on one year and opening up another and Boy, for sports fans, it's great, especially if you're a football fan. Yes, indeed, because I always think of after Christmas, we're getting ready to find out who's going to be playing in the national championship game for football. So I always look forward to that. So um, speaking of that, uh, why don't we go ahead and preview our college football playoff semifinals uh, that are going to be going down Saturday. Our first semifinal is going to be number three, TCU, uh, playing Michigan in the Verbo Fiesta Bowl. Uh, so let me get my notes out here. Uh, so TCU is 0-1 in the Fiesta Bowl. Uh, they lost to my Broncos, ironically, in 2010. Uh, and then Michigan, they're 1-0 in the Fiesta Bowl. They beat Nebraska in 1986, 27-23 to in Tempe, Arizona. So uh, Michigan and TCU have never played e each other in football. That's crazy to believe. Uh, Matthew, how do you see this one playing out? Is TCU going to continue this magic ride that they're on as they went 12-1 during the season? Well, so let's start, and I'll try to keep this as short as possible. Are you good? But, but let me begin <laughs> by just giving kind of like a precursor to everything that you're going to hear on the USRN broadcast. I'm on this game. Cannot wait for it. Um, this is, this would be the college football equivalent of the American dream, uh, what TCU has done. And I'm glad you mentioned when TCU was in the Fiesta Bowl last because that was a decade plus ago. And if you go back to those times, the late 2000s, TCU was one of those teams, one of those mid-major, what we would call in college basketball, these days in college football, what we would call group of five, one of the best group of five teams that not a lot of people knew about, Texas mm -hmm. Christian University. And here, here they came firing on all cylinders in those late 2000s. You think about those teams with Andy Dalton and so on. They made it to a Rose Bowl. They won that Rose Bowl, uh, what, one or two years after that Fiesta Bowl that you mentioned. And you almost got the feeling that in those times, they almost got overshadowed by Boise State because Boise State was so much fun to watch 
with everything that they did, the explosive nature of their offense, the blue turf, of course. Boise State got all the talk, and, and rightfully so, because they were very good, and they went out and they played people, and they beat people. They would beat Georgia. Yes. They would beat Virginia Tech. TCU <laughs> would do the same things, but they didn't get talked about all that much in the Mountain West. Now here they are, 10, 12, 15 years later. I, I know they're a power conference team now in the Big 12, but what a story this is in, in such a relatively short period of time that they were that, and now here they are in the college football playoff. So I, I just wanted to get that out of the way to begin because th this is a great, great story, what TCU has done the last decade and a half or so. But, of course, the present is the present, and none of that matters in this game. <laughs> um, if you ask me, Max Duggan would have been my vote to win the Heisman. I think uh, when if I had a Heisman vote, it literally would have been Max Duggan here and Caleb Williams here. I mean, they are dead even. But I think, first off, as we know, a lot of Heisman voters put in their votes one, two, three weeks early, which is ridiculous. They should not do that. Um, yes. DC is in the playoff and USC is not. I, I, I That's where it would come down for me. Um if I had a Heisman vote, as we know, I don't. Um, but Max Duggan <laughs> would have been my Heisman vote if I had one because he's been terrific. This guy is ridiculous. And, and I don't think he gets enough credit for just what a, a man he is, a dog that he is. I mean, he, he, he could play defensive end, I think. He's so <laughs> big and strong, and he does it at quarterback. Um, maybe defensive end was a bit of a linebacker. He could play linebacker. He could. He's um, big. <laughs> yeah, he, he's big. Um, but but he's going to have to show up in this game against Michigan because, as we know, Michigan is. Uh, speaking mm. of big, their defense is incredible, and I, I think the really interesting part of this game is going to be when Michigan has the ball and TCU is on defense. Michigan can run the ball better than basically any team in the country. We've seen what they did against Ohio State. They ran them off the field, and and, and they did it without Blake Corum, uh, who would have been in my final – would have been in my Heisman finalist, again, That's if right. I had a vote, which I don't. Uh, but <laughs> – uh, so what what can TCU do against that Michigan run game? And then on the other side, can Max Duggan uh, and this TCU offense, can they penetrate that Michigan defense, which is so extremely good? This is a tremendous matchup. I am uh, very happy that TCU made the playoff. I'm glad that I'm glad that the committee did the right thing. And when I say that, I mean did not penalize them greatly for the loss to Kansas State in the Big 12 championship game. One. Kansas State is a terrific team. As yeah. we know, they're in the Sugar Bowl, and they're gonna. A lot of people are gonna figure out that Kansas State is really good if they haven't already, because I I, I think Kansas State can and will beat Alabama, uh, in the Sugar Bowl. So one, Kansas State is good, and two, TCU just had a better resume than everybody else. So I'm glad that the committee did the right thing and didn't penalize them too much for that mm -hmm. loss, and they're in the playoff. And then for Michigan. This kind of comes down for Michigan. Can they, or are they ready for the moment now? Last year was, okay, we beat Ohio State for the first time in forever. And then, of course, they blew out Iowa in the Big Ten championship game. It almost felt like Ohio State was their national championship game, beating Ohio State and making the playoff. Now this year, it's, We've done what we expected to do. We expected to beat Ohio State. We did. We expected to win the Big Ten Championship. We did. Now we've got to be ready to win a playoff game because they were a no-show against Georgia uh, in the Orange Bowl last year. What it was ugly. Do? Yeah, yeah, it was. <laughs> what will they do in the semifinal this year? I, I, I can't wait for it. So, so who do you have winning the game? I think I've got Michigan – uh, because of their defense and uh, the aforementioned run game. I, I think running the ball the way they do, they're going to hold on to the ball for 35, maybe close to 40 minutes, and they're just going to suffocate TCU by holding on to the ball. TCU is not going to get a lot of chances to touch the ball on offense, and when you don't get a lot of chances to possess the ball, you've got to maximize every single possession. So if TCU gets... 
five, six possessions in the first half, they've got to maximize them. And I don't think, I don't think anybody, not just TCU, I don't think anybody can score on 80 or 90% of their drives against Michigan. I, I just don't. And I think that's going to be the difference in the game. Yes, I, I'm along. I'm along the same lines as you. I know Max Duggan. He's the truth. Like you said, he's a dog. Uh, but I just don't think TCU has seen a defense like Michigan, uh, and I don't think they've ran up against an offense like uh, the way Michigan is going to run the ball on on them. As we saw in the Big Twelve Championship game, Kansas State went over 200 rushing yards against them. So if if Kansas State can do that, Michigan they're a whole different animal on the ground. Uh, so I think it's a, been a magical run for TCU, but uh, like you said, I think Michigan, they're on a mission because uh, they got embarrassed in that college football playoff game last year. It was hard to watch. So I think they want to rematch with Georgia, and this is the first step to get that, and I, I got Michigan in this game. Well, let's preview our next one, which will be the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl between the number four seed, Ohio State, and the number one seed, the defending national champions, the Georgia Bulldogs. Uh, so Georgia is four and two in the Peach Bowl. Ohio State, this is their first Peach Bowl appearance because if I'm not mistaken, the Peach Bowl before it became a part of the college football playoff, I think it was always the ACC and the SEC uh, playing in the Peach Bowl. So that's why Ohio State has never played in it. And Ohio State and Georgia have oddly only played once, and that was in 1993. In the Florida Citrus Bowl, Georgia won 21 to 14. So, Matthew, um, can Ohio State pull this off? They have the offense. Now, we know they have the weapons on offense. Uh, do they have anybody that can deal with Jalen Carter? And how do you see this one playing out? And who do you have winning this one, bro? So, everybody that knows me knows very well I am nothing close to an Ohio State fan. Nope. <laughs> uh, with that being said, at the beginning of the season and basically all the way to the end of the year prior to the uh, to the Ohio State-Michigan game, Ohio State was my pick to win the national championship. I thought that this team, what we seen them do in the Rose Bowl nearly a full year ago that was, was what we would see them do in every game this year with C.J. Stroud and with their running ability, Travion Henderson. Um Jackson Smith and Jigba, Marvin Harrison, just all the weapons they had on offense. I thought they were just going to blow everybody out. But as we have seen throughout the season, Jackson Smith and Jigba has barely played. Uh, mm. And a lot of he, he had an injury that he suffered in the very first game of the year against Notre Dame. And ever since, it's been like it plays sporadically and sometimes doesn't play at all. And he's not going to play in this game against Georgia either. And that I think that immediately makes Georgia not only the favorite, but the decided favorite, the considerable favorite in this game. Because even with Jackson Smith and Jigba, Ohio State was going to struggle against this Georgia defense. Everybody struggles against this Georgia defense because it's the best defense in the country. Look what Tennessee did against the Georgia defense. Tennessee was maybe the best offense in the country this year. Yes. And Georgia basically shut them down for 60 minutes. And um I I I would love to pull the trigger and say Ohio State's gonna win this game because I've been packing them all year long. But without Jackson Smith and Jigba, I just don't think they can be explosive enough against this Georgia defense. I really don't. The only way Ohio State wins this game, in my opinion, because they're not going to score. I, I, I don't see them scoring 35 points against Georgia. I don't see them scoring 30, 34, 38, 40 points against Georgia. So if you're going to win the game, you're going to have to do it in a low scoring way, right? And I don't think they can win low scoring games. Not either. to mention... Not to mention, we just talked about how Michigan pounded them in the running game in that game in Columbus. What what Georgia might do? Georgia might run for 200 or 250 against them. Um, if you would have told me at the start of the season we would get Georgia and Ohio State in a playoff game, I would have said, one, it'd be in the national championship game, and I'd say it's going to be a classic. I don't get that feeling anymore. I'm afraid Georgia might win this going away, which is really a shame because we haven't had a lot of close playoff games 
since the playoffs started, however many years ago it was now. 2014. And, and I don't think it's going to – I don't think this is going to be close either. I may be wrong. I hope I am. So you got Georgia winning in a blowout. <laughs> well, I, I have Georgia winning. I have Georgia covering the six and a half that they're favored by. I would say – I'm not going to say they're going to win 38 to three or anything uh, like the 31, 16 kind of a score where it's not, you know, a 50 point blowout, but it's not really close either. So I want to ask you about Jackson Smith and Jacob, but do you think it's more about him not wanting to risk it because he's going to be one of the top picks next year? Or why do you think they really held him out for the majority of this year? Unfortunately, you have to tread carefully with this because you or I or anybody like us, we're not inside that program. We're certainly not inside the head of Jackson Smith and Jigba. We don't know what he's thinking. We don't know what he's being told by his family, by his agent, which I'm going to guess he probably has by now. Um, we don't know everything that's being said to him, but yes, I, I get the feeling that that first game of the year against Notre Dame, he suffered that injury. And I think it was from that point on, probably you got to look out for your future, um, which no one can blame a player, especially in football for no. looking out for their future, because he's going to get paid handsomely by an NFL team because he's so talented at the same time. If you're an Ohio state fan, you got to just think, Oh, what a special year it could have been for him. Uh, I mean, if, if Jackson Smith and Jigba played the whole season like we thought he would uh, and the way he played last year, especially in that Rose Bowl, he would have been a Heisman finalist, which you never yeah. see out of a wide receiver. Um, so, yeah, I, I think that probably is why we just haven't seen him this year. Yeah, because I, I know a hamstring, I think that's what he heard, his hamstring, if I'm not mistaken. And that's something you can't really mess around with because it could, once it goes, it goes. And, you know, you really don't want to do any damage that's going to hurt your NFL career. So that makes sense. Uh, I wanted to pick Ohio State so bad. Um, but like you said, I just don't know if they're going to be able to score enough on this Georgia defense. Uh, and I don't know who's going to deal with Jalen Carter because that's a grown man right there. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I mean Marvin Harris Jr. He, he he's he's looked really good. I just don't know if CJ Stroud is gonna have enough time to get him the ball. <laughs> um, um, so I think Georgia's gonna win as well, and I think we're gonna get a Georgia and Michigan rematch in the national championship game, and I think that's gonna be a classic. Um, and then if you look at Georgia's offense, they got Brock Bowers, who I think he's just gonna. Yeah. Be He's going to be something special once he's eligible to go uh, to the pros. He, he He's the next Gronk slash Kittle slash uh, – Kelsey. Kelsey, thank you. That's the one I'm forgetting. Boy, Michael Thompson will love me. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> uh, he, he, he's the next one of those guys in the league at tight end. He really is. So, so Georgia, they're loaded on offense and de defense. They really don't have no weaknesses, so – I'm hoping we get two close games, but um, like you said, this one has the chance to kind of get ugly. Um, I, I'm hoping I mean, for one close game because for the, basically every year this playoff, save for a couple of years, we've had two blowouts. So I just like one close game. <laughs> and then the national championship most years isn't. <laughs> I mean, some years it's been close, but some years it's been. Um, it's been really uh, hard to watch. Um, but yet, but yet, we want to make it a twelve-team playoff because that'll fix that problem. Oh yeah, and that's gonna be don't next get, year, right? Don't get me started on that. <laughs> that that's next year, right? I think two thousand twenty-four. I, I don't even know. I can't keep up with when they're doing it. They want to do it early, uh, sooner rather than later. I don't know, but so I wonder how that's gonna work because that's uh, extra games for these teams. This uh, that's gonna be. I can't wait to see how it's that's going to play out. Stupid. It's going to be stupid. Like I've been saying it will be for all these years. You know, we have playoff games that are blowouts year in and year out. But yet, you know, let's bring in Troy to play Georgia. Yeah, I'll bet that'll be a close game. <laughs> uh, and as we know, this is going to be the first college football playoffs without Alabama or Clemson, uh, who both have the most appearances in the college football playoffs since it started in 2014. Alabama has seven appearances, and Clemson, Clemson has six. And Alabama has won the most college football playoff championships with three. Uh, so Georgia could kind of get 
closer to them if they win in a couple weeks. Uh, so, Matthew, since you did pick Georgia and Michigan in your national championship game, in case we don't get you back on the show, who's, who do you think is going to win the national championship? Do you think Georgia is going to repeat? or I would have to pick Michigan. Uh, I think Michigan – would be ready, prepared, and able to beat Georgia this year if indeed it does come to that. And uh, not only will I say Michigan would beat Georgia, I'll, gi- I'll give you this too. I think Michigan would beat Georgia, and I actually think that uh, that we would see Mr. Harbaugh retire. Oh, wow. I do. I, I think I think if they win a national championship, he would uh he would retire, at least for Michigan. Um, and then maybe maybe test out the NFL waters again. But I think I think that would be a perfect way for him to end his uh head coaching tenure at Michigan would be with back to back wins over Ohio State, back to back playoff appearances and a national championship. Michigan hasn't won a national championship in a long time, ninety seven. Oh, yes. I mean that is if you want to go out, I think that'd be the perfect time to go out on that note. Um, so why don't we uh, switch to the NFL now? And uh, our first game, um, oh, God. The, 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 the the things I'm hearing, I don't think this is going to be pretty. Uh, we got the Dallas Cowboys visiting the Tennessee Titans. Um, from all indications that I've been hearing all week, Tennessee, they're just going to uh, – basically rest their uh key players i heard they're banged up so uh this game doesn't mean anything to them so i haven't you know heard you know confirmed yet i guess we won't hear till tomorrow but all indications are that tennessee's just gonna mail it in this week and just put everything into next week against jacksonville i don't know how that's gonna work out for them um even if they were playing everybody uh i just don't think tennessee Unless Derrick Henry went crazy, I, I, if they're resting their key players, I don't know if he's going to play tomorrow. Um, so that's really up in the air for me if he's going to play because um, I was thinking they were going to try to control the clock because Dallas isn't good at stopping the run. Um, but Tennessee's a disaster on offense. They have a really good front seven, really good defense. Um, so it's just too many questions with Tennessee. So I think the Cowboys are going to go on the road. Uh, pick up a big time uh, road victory. Keep building momentum towards the playoffs. Dak, I think he's going to continue to build off that big game he had last week against Philly. Uh, that was one of the best games he's played to me. Uh, the way it started, I was like, "Oh dear Jesus, Philly's about to run us off the field." We got down ten nothing. Uh, then he pulled it together and he played pretty much perfect from there from after that point. So. Uh, I got to take the Cowboys, but everything I've been hearing this week, it looks like the Titans are just going to mail this in after they lost to the Texans last week. So, Matthew, how do you see our Thursday night game playing out? I know that this is going to be impossible for you and people like yourself to do. But can we not talk about the Cowboys? <laughs> First off, this is a disgrace what the Titans are going to do. I know there's a strategy to it. Yeah, we're going to rest everybody so we're ready for Jacksonville next week because that's what our season comes down to is the Jacksonville game. We're not going to play Henry and we're not going to play Tannehill. We're not going to play it. Then why play the game at all? Go out and win this game this week. I don't know, maybe Jacksonville loses to Houston. Maybe they don't. They're certainly not favored to lose to Houston. But go out and win this game, take your mini-buy, and then go out and beat Jacksonville. This is a disgrace. This is an absolute disgrace what Tennessee is doing. I hope they don't make the playoffs solely for this. Actually, not solely for this. I hope they don't make the playoffs, period, because like you said, they're a joke on offense. They're garbage everywhere. This is a disappointment as a team. It's been an unbelievable fall from grace from where they were three or four years ago when they made the AFC championship game. This is ridiculous. So yes, 
Dallas is going to win this game. They're going to win it going away. And then we're going to hear for the next week, oh, the Cowboys are going to win the Super Bowl. Look what they just did to Tennessee. They beat them by 37 points, and they're going to be brilliant. Dak Prescott's the MVP. Ezekiel Elliott is the second coming of Tony Dorsett. And this Cowboys team is fantastic. How about them, Cowboys? Who cares? They're going to win this game by like 30 points. Can we just talk about something else? I can't stand any time the Cowboys win a game, suddenly they're the Super Bowl favorites. It's ridiculous. Thank you, Tennessee, for doing this. Garbage. And as we heard today, Doug Peterson said he's not going to rest his key, his key Thank players. You. Um, Thank you. There's some integrity about that man. Why don't we go into the new year? Uh, our Sunday slate, which will be on New Year's, uh, this is another <laughs> ugly game. <laughs> we got the Arizona <laughs> Cardinals and visiting the Atlanta Falcons. <laughs> um, I picked Atlanta. Uh, I, I don't have much faith in the Cardinals. I don't know who's going to be playing quarterback for them. Uh, Atlanta, they haven't had much go right this year. Um, Desmond Ritter, he looked pretty good uh, last week against the Ravens. Um, I know they didn't score a lot of points, but, I mean – he he was kind of starting to figure things out. I have no faith in the Cardinals. Um, I want to give a salute to J.J. Watt. I see he's retiring at the end of the year. Um, I think the injuries just added up for him, and I understand why he's retiring at only 33. Um, one of my favorite players, he had a stretch where he was just the best de defensive player in football, man. He was just a game record, but those injuries, the back end of his career just really derailed his career. So um, give me Atlanta. Um, I just don't have much faith in the Cardinals. Um, they have so many weapons, but they just don't have a good quarterback to get the ball to their weapons. So give me Atlanta. Matthew, how do you see our first game of the new year playing out? I don't know what makes you say this is going to be an ugly game at all. These are two wonderful teams. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> This is, a, this is a disgrace to football, what these two teams will put on for us at 1 o'clock on Fox for the few thousand people that might watch this game, or maybe it's the few hundred people that will watch this game. I apologize for you having to be put to just put on your couch on Sunday to start the new year and to watch this game. God bless you. Godspeed. Atlanta will win. It does not matter who wins, though. That's simple. Um, so next we got the Chicago Bears visiting the Detroit Lions. Uh, Matthew, um, do you think Detroit uh, regains themselves, uh, you know, kind of gets themselves back together after letting the Panthers just run the ball all over them last week? Or do you think the Bears pulled the upset? I certainly hope Detroit wins because they've still got a chance at the playoffs. And, of course, this is a team that I was backing all year to make the playoffs. That was my big upset special at the start of the year. You can look back on it. I, 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 ha I have the receipts. I have the tape that I said at the start of the year Detroit was going to make the playoffs. Um, of course, we started to believe that they actually were last week, and they did a, lot, a very Detroit Lions thing to do, and they got blown out by Carolina. Uh, I hope they win. This week, I think they will. Chicago having a knack of playing close games lately, but just not winning many. Mm, um, yep. I'm I'm going I'm going to hope that Detroit wins because I I want to see them in the playoffs. If for any other reason, because I think it would be fun, and I think, that, uh, thankfully, I think some people are seeing that Jared Goff is not a garbage quarterback. I don't know when we've when we ever got to that point with him. He's not a horrible quarterback. That just became the narrative for some reason. He's proven everybody wrong this year. Come on, Detroit. And I, I also have a Detroit winning because this could be interesting because if they win this week, if Green Bay wins this week, next week in Green Bay, that could set off something really interesting in Green yeah. Bay. Um, but Chicago, I think they're trying to get the highest draft pick that they can get. Uh, they need. They want Jackson Smith and Jigba. <laughs> uh, they they have so many needs. They need all the picks in the first round. <laughs> if we're being honest, uh, they need a whole roster upgrade uh, around Justin Fields. Uh, so I got Detroit winning because they're uh, playing for something, and Chicago is trying to get the highest draft pick that they can get. 
uh, so they can get the, one of the best players coming out of the draft. So I agree with you. Hopefully Detroit wins, and next week in Green Bay, it could be something special. Um, So next we have the Jacksonville Jaguars visiting the Houston Texans. Uh, so originally I was taking the Texans because I heard that Jacksonville was doing what Tennessee was doing, and then Doug Peterson shut all that down. So I went back to Jacksonville winning. Houston, they've kind of started playing much better football lately. It's like they're trying to ruin some teams' seasons the way they've been playing lately. They beat Tennessee last week. That shocked me. I thought Tennessee could at least get get yeah. get past get past the Houston Texans, but Houston said not so fast. Uh, the way Jacksonville has been playing lately, uh, I'm taking Jacksonville. Uh, Trevor Lawrence has really turned things around. They're playing some really good football. And I think we have a playoff football in Duval County uh, coming up in a couple weeks. Uh, Matthew, do you – Think Houston's gonna pull another AFC South upset, or how do you see this one playing out? No, I think last week was the glory day of the year for Houston, uh, and I think I think that moment is gone. God bless them. Uh, I'm taking Jacksonville to win by double digits. Wow. Okay. Um, well, next we got the Denver Broncos uh, visiting the Kansas City Chiefs, as oh. we know. Uh, Denver fired their head coach, Nathaniel Hackett, after they uh, let Baker Mayfield look like Joe Montana uh, Sunday. <laughs> um, and they gave up uh, a Christmas record of 51 points against the Rams. Uh, I didn't think neither team was going to get past 20. Uh, but, of course, Russell Wilson uh, burnt the Christmas dinner and uh, <laughs> threw, threw four interceptions. And, I mean, they were just god-awful. I I have no idea what he was looking at. Um, so best of luck to whoever the next coach is having to fix that mess. <laughs> yeah. So the only way uh, the Broncos keep this one close is if it was like the last time they played when Patrick Mahomes took some unnecessary risk and he threw three interceptions. And this Denver offense, they came to life mostly because of his turnovers. But if Patrick Mahomes plays a clean game, this one could get ugly fast because Denver, without help, they can't score points on offense. Uh, so I have Kansas City winning. Uh, Matthew, uh, I feel like you're going to pick the upset here. No? <laughs> no. No, the Broncos are an absolute joke. Russell Wilson has uh, – well, Russell Wilson fooled us all into thinking that he was a good quarterback, into thinking – that he was a great quarterback. Um, clearly, he was carried by Pete Carroll in that Seattle defense more than we uh, thought he was, and Marshawn Lynch, for that matter. Yeah. Um, Denver is absolutely awful. I feel for Nathaniel Hackett. Now, listen, Nathaniel Hackett was far from great this year. He made some very questionable and head-scratching decisions, but I don't think he deserved to get fired. Um, but as we know, it was a standalone game on Christmas. The entire world was watching him and his team get absolutely slaughtered by an equally as bad Rams team. Well, maybe not equally as bad, uh, but not good Rams team. And that's probably, mm -hmm. well, I, I would guarantee you that's why they made the move is that everybody yeah. saw them lose a million to three. Um Denver is absolutely awful. Give me Kansas City to win this game, probably by as many as the Rams beat them by. It's, it's probably going to be a similar scoreline. It's probably going to be about 45 to 10. Yeah, because, I mean, Denver has a good defense, but I think they just give up after a while because they're like, if Russ is going to just throw it to the other team, why are we yeah. trying? <laughs> and that's happened a couple times this season where they just mailed it in. <laughs> Because they're like, why, why are we going to play good defense just for you to throw it to the other team? Yeah. Um, but, yeah, like you said, Nathaniel Hackett, I think at times he was over his head this season. It was his first coaching job. Uh, but, yeah, after that disaster on Christmas, I just feel like they had to pull the plug. <laughs> they really didn't have no choice. Uh, so we got the Miami Dolphins visiting the New England Patriots. Um it's just really awful what happened to Tuba. Um, another concussion. Uh, third concussion in three months. Um, I wasn't watching this game when he got concussed. I was wondering what was wrong with him in that second half because some of the decisions he was making, I was just like, 
you got people wide open and you're going over throwing balls and stuff like that. So um, I think his NFL future is in jeopardy um, because three concussions in one season, that's scary. Um, I don't think he should play again this year. I would be terrified if they put him out there anymore this year. Um, and then New England, you know, we saw what Mac Jones did. He low cut yeah. Eli Apple and made that ridiculous um, explanation that he had. Um, I'm really not sure about this one. I took Miami. I'm not very confident in this pick, but I refuse to pick New England and Mac Jones after that yeah. foolishness he pulled yeah. last week. Um, how do you see this one playing out? Yeah, I'm with you. Uh, I know the Dolphins are in the middle of a into a race to get into the playoffs, and they've been really good. When they've been at their best this year, they've been super good. But I, I really hope that Tua does not play again this year because it, it it's this is obviously you don't need me to tell you it's nothing to play to play with and to mm-hmm. have. This many concussions in such a short period of time, just uh, shut it down for the rest of the year. Don't know if they will do that or not. Obviously, he's not going to play this week. I think that probably lends itself to New England winning. Uh, but I'm I, I'm not I, – I don't really like this New England team. I, I think the offense is pretty dreadful, which, I mean, why wouldn't it be? Matt Patricia is the offensive coordinator. Who <laughs> in the wide world of sports in that organization made Matt Patricia, the former defensive coordinator, the offensive coordinator? What are we doing? What is that? So the offense is dreadful. Coming off of this game a couple of weeks ago against Las Vegas, where they showed to the world that they are not a well-coached team, with no, oh, that was awful. <laughs> they lost yeah, that game. And the pure buffoonery that went on there at the end of that game. And then last week they were getting absolutely slaughtered by Cincinnati. And then all of a sudden Cincinnati just stopped playing and let New England back in the game. Um, New England probably does win, but I don't think they're very good. I hope they don't make the playoffs. That's nothing against New England. I just don't want to see them make the playoffs because I don't think they're very good. And whoever they play, possibly Kansas City, Buffalo, or Cincinnati. Ooh. It would just be a blowout. It, would, it wouldn't be a close game, and no one wants to sit through that. So I'm hoping that they don't make the playoffs. Therefore, I'm hoping they don't win this game, but I think they will, which is kind of sad. No disrespect, New England fans. Yeah, I don't want them blowing up your mentions, but like you said, I don't know what Bill Belichick was thinking, letting Joe Judge and Matt Patricia Oh. All the offense. Uh, he must he must have been drinking a little bit when he made that decision. He had to. <laughs> <laughs> he must have had him a couple shots or something to make that decision. Lord, we have all these awful games this week. What is going on with the NFL? <laughs> uh, now we got to talk about Indianapolis and the Giants. Um, so let's do that. Okay. In- Indianapolis Colts are visiting the New York Giants. If the Giants win, they get in the playoffs. Um, the Colts, oh boy. Uh, it started oh. with them giving up 33 points to Dallas in the fourth quarter when they just, it's like, it's like they forgot how to play football in that fourth quarter. And then they up 33 nothing on the Minnesota Vikings and let the Minnesota Vikings come back and beat them in overtime. I still can't believe that happened. And then for some reason, Jeff Saturday thought, oh, let me put Nick Foles in there and he's going to do something. <laughs> he only scored three points and had a three. Point five QBR. Um, so um, the Giants are going to win this game because if they win, they get in the playoffs. The Colts are just dreadful, uh, oh. like some of the other teams we've talked about. Um, so I got the Giants win this game. Matthew, uh, I guess you have New York as well. Uh, there's no way you could pick the Colts. <laughs> no, no. Just thank the good Lord up above that we don't have to see the Colts in prime time again this year. We saw them way too much in prime time. Good heavens. Between the Broncos game, uh, the Cowboys game, the Chargers game on Monday night, the Steelers game was on a Monday night. We saw the Colts way too much. I was confused why. I was like. <laughs> yeah. So, so they got those primetime games. Then they got that standalone game on that Saturday against Minnesota. We've just seen the Colts way too much. 
uh, yes, the Giants should win this game, will win this game. And uh, Daniel Jones, Saquon Barkley, and the Giants will be playoff bound. What a, what a turnaround by that team, by the way. And, yes. and, and listen, I, I am very much impartial to Daniel Jones, but uh, Coach Dable has just done an incredible job all year long molding that Giants team into what they are, which is a playoff team. They're not going to win a Super Bowl, but they are way ahead of schedule. They don't. Daniel Jones has nobody to throw the ball to. Um, if Saquon Barkley isn't running like crazy, then the offense is basically nothing. But yet they've won a lot more games than they should have this year. And uh, boy, they're way ahead of schedule. And now here they are uh, just about in the playoffs. Yeah, well, they'll be in there Sunday after they beat uh... – I guess you can say the Colts are still an NFL team. Uh, but yeah, they'll, they'll be in there. <laughs> well, if, they, if the Broncos are, I guess the Colts are. Yeah, the Colts, that, they're probably not going to try too hard because they need a quarterback and they need a couple other things to turn this thing around. Uh, so I doubt they're going to try hard to win this game. It's probably going to be like Monday night when they let the Chargers beat them by 20. Uh, but like you said, what Coach Dayball has done with this Giants team is nothing short of amazing. And I think he's probably – going to be our front runner to win coach of the year because we know what the Giants have looked like the last couple of years uh, when they've had some very poor coaches. <laughs> so it's a miracle that they've turned this thing around. Um, so, Matthew, uh, next we got the New Orleans Saints visiting the Philadelphia Eagles. Um, really not sure if Jalen Hurts is going to play this week. Um, how do you see this one playing out? Um, do, do Philly, will they wrap it up? Uh, this week at home, the division, the number one seed, will they take care of business at home? I hope they don't play Jalen Hurts. Now, with that being said, they probably are going to get the one seed and get that by. So if he can play, I hope he does play next week because I don't think you would want to enter the playoffs with your quarterback not having played for a month. Oh, yeah. um, mm. But I don't think they should play him this week. Uh, whether they do or don't play him, they're going to beat New Orleans. I, I, I think it's – that simple the saints have just been they've gone through so many different kind of peaks and valleys this year the saints because at the start of the year you said well if they're going to make the playoffs which at the beginning of the year we thought that could happen they're going to do it with their defense their defense started off terrible now the defense has gotten better but now they can't score on a consistent basis i think they'll we'll win either way Yes, because as we saw last week, uh, even with their backup, they still can put up points because they have so many weapons on that offense. A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith, you got Miles Sanders. And then that defense, that that front four, they can really get after you, harass your quarterback. And uh, I think they got a couple guys with at least 10 sacks on that front line. So it's it's scary. Uh, So Andy Dalton, I think he's going to be on the ground a lot Sunday. Uh, And I think the Eagles, they'll give their fans a – a happy, happy send off into the new year by wrapping up the number one seed and the division. Uh, Cause I just think that defense, I think they're just going to um, really harass poor Andy Dalton all day long. He's probably going to think about retiring. <laughs> they're going to hit him <laughs> so much. <laughs> um, now, as we've seen Sunday, hopefully they get healthy on the back end because uh, they did, they did have some, some mishaps back there that were concerning so hopefully they get a couple guys back back there because the Saints do have some receivers for the few times that Andy Dalton is able to throw the ball. Um, and Alvin Kamara is one of the best backs in football. But I think Philly, I think they'll be angry at the way they lost to Dallas last week. And I think the Saints will be in the wrong place at the wrong time uh, Sunday. All right, um, this next one is a big one. I can't believe I'm saying this, but the Carolina Panthers have a shot at getting in the playoffs. So something I did not expect to be saying. Uh the way they started the season, especially when Baker Mayfield was in there at quarterback. I thought they were gonna be looking for a quarterback when he was in there at quarterback. Uh, but ever since Steve Wilkes has took over, he, what he's done with this team is nothing short of amazing. I hope they give him a chance to actually win this job because this team plays really hard for him. Uh and they run the air out of the ball under Steve Wilkes. Uh I was not expecting them to get 300-plus rushing yards against the Lions last week. That was impressive. Uh, I think they had, like, almost 250 at halftime last week. I couldn't believe my eyes. I was like, what? 
Wow. Um, so, Matthew, um, will Tom Brady find a way to beat this Panthers team at home Sunday? First off, Steve Wilk should be uh, the head coach of the Carolina Panthers next year. Uh, I think he's proven that he is easily the best candidate for the job. The team has responded to him being the head coach of this yes. team. I, I think he should be – I think the interim tag should have been off yesterday. Um, I think the interim tag should have been off a couple of weeks ago, really, especially when they went to Seattle and won. Uh, I don't – the problem is he probably won't be the head coach next year because they have an idiotic owner that doesn't know what he's doing and wants to make a splash hire. He, the owner, David Tepper, he, he wants to do everything with a big splash. Like There's been talk of him going after Tom Brady and bringing him to be the quarterback – for Carolina next year, which makes no sense. Yeah, he don't want no parts of that. (laughs) No, he doesn't. And, and, and he probably wants to, uh, he probably wants to bring in a Sean Payton as the coach next year, or, or maybe Harbaugh when he retires from Michigan. I don't know. So uh, that aside, what an intriguing game. I'm calling it USR in on Sunday. Uh, No one thought we would go into this game week 17, thinking that it carried this much weight, but here we are. Listen, Tampa Bay is horrible. Tampa Bay is a horrible team. And again, I I will raise my hand and say I am not the most objective person to talk about this. We all know that I'm a huge Tom Brady fan. But if Tom Brady drags this cadaver of a team to the playoffs, it's one of the greatest accomplishments that he's ever had. And we're talking about the greatest quarterback to ever live. This team is awful, but yet he has them in first place in the division and if they win sunday they win the division and they'll go to the playoffs it's and i know the division is terrible but someone's got to win it (laughs) and uh tampa bay can win it if they win this game on sunday and and, uh, the coaching has been terrible they can't keep anyone healthy on the offensive line chris godwin is in the witness protection program mike evans can't do everything on his own they have no tight end presence the defense is terrible the whole team is terrible and listen tom brady hasn't been playing great he hasn't been playing like the greatest of all time the the whole team is terrible outside of those few flashes when you see tom brady look like the old tom brady like he did a couple of weeks ago against new orleans on a monday night when they can occasionally run the ball and then when mike evans shows the hall of fame talent that he is With that being said, I think they're going to struggle to win this game. Carolina won the game between these two earlier in the season, and they won it easily. I think it was like 21 to 3 or something like that. It was a blowout. 20 to 3. Yeah, I think 20 20 to 3. There you go. Something like that. It wasn't even close. So I think you go into this game thinking Carolina stands more than a shot to win this game. Ultimately, I will pick Tampa Bay. Because, again, if they win, they win the division. They're at home. I think that'll be just enough to get them over the finish line. But I think this is is pretty close to a coin toss game. I really do think that. (sighs) Um, I wanted to pick the Panthers so, so bad. Um, But I just can't can't see Tom Brady losing this game at home. I I, I just uh, – as we've seen – if Tom Brady can keep it close until the fourth quarter, he's going to pull a rabbit out of his hat. <laughs> um, like last week, I thought they were about to lose to the Cardinals. And then 10 minutes left, Tom Brady, they went up up tempo, and Tom Brady pulled a miracle out. Um, now, I am concerned because I don't know if Vita Vea is going to be playing this week. And teams have been able to run the ball on the Bucks without him in the lineup because Vita Vea is just a mountain of a man, and it's hard moving him off the the line of scrimmage. Uh, so that is concerning. Um, but man, I want the Panthers to be in the playoffs so bad, but I I just can't pick against Tom Brady. I uh, I think this is gonna I'll be really good. I'll, I'll say this. I'll, I'll say this about the game too. Carolina is the better coach team. We just talked about how well Steve Wilkes has prepared yes. this team as the weeks have gone by. And Todd Bowles is just not an NFL head coach. He is a supreme defensive coordinator, but he's not an NFL head coach. And I think he's shown that over, well, this season. I, I don't think this is a well-coached Tampa Bay team. 
And so Carolina is the better coach team. That could very well come into play. And it is like you've mentioned that Tampa's offensive line is banged up and the Panthers have some really uh, good, have a good, good defensive line. So that is concerning. But I think Tom Brady, like I said, I think he finds a way to win this game some some way, somehow. Next, we got the Cleveland Browns visiting the Washington Commanders. Um, Cleveland, I was shocked that they lost to the Saints, uh, especially because I thought the conditions would favor them in Cleveland last week. It was it felt like it was negative five in Cleveland last week. It was frost on the field. Uh, I was shocked that they lost that game to the Saints. Um, Washington needs this game. They're playing for something. They're trying to hold everybody off behind them. So I think Washington will win this game uh, because they're actually playing for something. Uh, I think Washington finds a way at home to win. Uh, Hopefully Chase Young is able to come back this week. Hopefully they're able to put some pressure on Deshaun Watson. I think they should lean on their run game, Brian Robertson, and Antonio Gibson, and then Terry McLaurin, he's the truth. They have some dynamic receivers as well. Um, but I think Washington at home, they need this game really, really bad. I think they find a way to beat the Browns. Matthew, how about you? Yeah, I agree. Uh, Deshaun Watson has not been good since coming back. Who could have seen that coming? Um, and <laughs> I think Washington is good enough to win this game. Uh yeah, I, th- I think it's that simple. I think Washington is just that good enough to win this game. Uh, and, and to your point, they can run the ball extremely well. So uh, I'll take Washington. Next one, I think it could get ugly fast. Uh, the yeah. San Francisco 49ers visiting Las Vegas Raiders. Uh, the Raiders announced that they're benching Derek Carr for the rest of the season. Uh, I think that's smart. Uh, they did not <laughs> want to put him, put him up against that um, – 49ers defense, I don't blame him. I mean, he, he hasn't been playing well, especially lately. Um, and they've blown some big leads, <laughs> as we've known. Uh, so I think San Francisco, I think they're going to run away with this game. Uh, that defense is no joke. And Brock Purdy, he he's really, you know, he's, ha- he's held his own on that offense since he took over for Jimmy G uh, with George Kittle, Anouk. Uh, you know, they have a lot of great weapons on that offense. Um, but, yeah, give me San Francisco. Uh, I just don't think the Raiders are going to be ready for what's coming their way. Uh, Sunday at 4 o'clock, I think this one could, is going to get ugly fast. And then Harry and Nick Bosa, he's going to give Jared Stidham nightmares. The way he's going to be flying off that edge. <laughs> Yeah, give me San Francisco by a bundle of points here. Uh, th- this is uh, this is very telling what's going on with the Raiders right now. You remember a handful of weeks ago after they lost a game, Derek Carr came into the post-game press conference nearly in tears, basically saying not everybody in the locker room cares about winning. Uh, that was a huge red flag. Yeah, that was shocking when he I, said that. <laughs> yeah, and I, I feel for Derek Carr. He is a very passionate player, and I think given the right tools, he's a very good quarterback. Not a great quarterback, but a very good quarterback. And th- this is just terrible what they've done. I, I get it. They're not going to make the playoffs. But to bench him, and they're making him inactive, by the way. He's not even going to be their backup quarterback. Yeah, that's crazy. Um, they, They're treating him horribly. And uh, I, I think the Derek Carr era with the Raiders is over. He will not be there next year. Th- this is, um, th- this is. I-, I find it disrespectful what they're doing to Derek Carr here. I really do, and uh, he doesn't deserve this. Our next game is going to be the New York Jets uh, visiting the Seattle Seahawks. Um, as we've seen, the Jets they're going to go back to Mike White this week. Uh, Zach, Zach Wilson has just been awful. Uh, <laughs> last week was really the icing on the cake. He was getting booed and everything else. Uh, the New York market is not made for everybody. Um, so Zach Wilson, he's a young he's a young player. So maybe this isn't the end for him per se, but he's definitely not coming back to New York next year. Um, 
So, Matthew, do you think the Jets are going to win, or how do you see this one playing out? Well, first off, I feel for Zach Wilson because I think I, I think he's an extremely talented quarterback. There was a reason he was picked so high. Uh, you can look at everything that he did at BYU. You can see there's an extreme amount of talent there. Um, there's just been a lot go wrong with New York, um, with the Jets. And, and he is not without blame. In no way am I saying he's without blame here. He's got to play better. But there have been games they've lost this year that's not been solely because of him. I especially look at that Detroit game a couple of weeks ago. I, uh, the coaching was not good, especially at the end. Robert Sala not using his timeouts. Uh and I know that there's been this talk that he's lost the locker room, Zach Wilson I'm speaking of. And that kind of started that New England game, right, where the Patriots got that late punt return for a touchdown and won 10-3. Uh, the offense did nothing, and he was asked, uh, you know, did, they, did he let the defense down? He said no, and it kind of started to snowball from that. Yeah. With all of that said, and, and you add in Seattle are kind of regressing back to the mean, back to what we thought they would be at the start of the season. They lost to Carolina. Um, they've lost to San Francisco. They lost to Kansas City. So they've kind of regressed back to what we thought they would be. But this is still a big game, right? Seattle's a half game out of the final NFC playoff spot behind Washington. The Jets are only one game behind Miami. Uh, it, it, for the final AFC playoff spot. So this is a big game. The winner is still in the mix. The loser is probably out. So this probably. is a huge game. Uh, so let's see what happens. Mike White has played really well uh, at times. You think back to that Minnesota game, which they could have easily won at the tail end with Mike White at quarterback. Let's see how this game goes because this is a big game. We're going to get to the Sunday night game in a bit, Pittsburgh and Baltimore. Personally, I think this was this should have been the Sunday night game, Jets and Seahawks. I'll talk about that in a minute because I feel very strongly about that. Um, <laughs> I, I, I think this is one of those classic games where the home field advantage is probably going to determine it. I think it's a coin toss game, and I think Seattle being at home is just going to get them to the finish line here. Uh, give me Seattle to win – 21 to 20. All right. Yeah. Uh, I think that's going to be a really good game. Um, I went the opposite way in this game. Um, I picked the Jets um, because something I've noticed uh, is Geno Smith, when the team can really get out to him, put a lot of pressure on him, that Seattle, they don't do well on offense. And the Jets, they can really generate a lot of pressure on offense. I mean, on on the opposing quarterbacks. Um, so I think that's concerning. Tyler Lockett may come back this week. We have to wait and see. Um, but this Jets offense looks much – it looks totally different when Mike White is in there. People are happy. You know, the receivers, they're happy. Uh, so I think the Jets find a way on the road to get a big-time road victory. Um, but, yeah, Seattle, that's a tough place to go in there and win. And, um but, uh, yeah, I think the Jets, I think they're really just going to harass Geno Smith. And I think uh, this could maybe turn into a shootout, maybe. Um, but I, I think the Jets' defense is going to be the difference in this game. And I got the Jets going on the road and getting a big-time win. Um, so, next we have another big one. Uh, the Minnesota Vikings at the Green Bay Packers. Uh, the Packers, they need a win out, and they need a lot of help. Uh, they need some teams in front of them to lose. Um, so, Matthew, will the Packers keep their playoff hopes alive? That's a very interesting question, isn't it? Because um, they have not been good this season, the Packers, but you can tell that it is a team that has gotten better. It, it is crunch time on the season, and they're starting to win games. Uh, think about the way they beat Miami on Christmas. Uh, they needed to win. They did. They found a way to win. Uh, you, can, you can even go back to the Dallas game, which was quite a bit – it was quite a while ago now, that Dallas game. That felt like a must-win game for them, and they won it. Um, and then after that, they lost a couple of games, and you thought they're 
they're done. Well, here they are still. They're just barely alive here. And and really, it's the teams ahead of them that's kept them alive, right? They haven't been able to slam the door shut on them. And then you compare it to Minnesota, who's 12-3, and three, but good God. <laughs> they could easily be 3-12, and 12. With the way they're winning some of these games, think about the way they won. Uh, they beat Indianapolis down by a million and coming back to win. Um, mm-hmm. The Giants last week they hit a 61-yard field goal at the horn. And any time that we've seen Minnesota play an elite team, uh, save the Buffalo game, give them credit, they did win at Buffalo. But outside of that. Anytime we've seen them play an elite team, they just have not showed up. They were a no-show against Philly uh, week two. They got killed by Dallas um, 40-3, to whenever that game was. Uh, oh, that was the Packers game. When you have that for the Packers game, yeah. So you just, you think, when are they going to, when are they going to, look like a team that has a legitimate Super Bowl chance because you look at a team that's 12 and 3 and you think they're a Super Bowl contender. I don't know. They're they're so weird to read. Um I think another interesting aspect of this game is these two played in week one, which feels like forever ago now. And the <laughs> Vikings <does. laughs> really the Vikings really dominated that game 23 to 7. Uh, they got after Aaron Rodgers. He didn't have any time to throw. But remember, that was back when, remember when the conversation was, well, who's Aaron Rodgers going to throw to? He doesn't have anyone yep. to throw to. His receivers <laughs> are awful. All of a sudden, we're kind of thinking, okay, Christian Watson, okay. Alan Lazard, okay. They can get things done with these guys. Um, all common sense should tell you Minnesota is going to win this game. I think Green Bay wins. I think they're going to get a little bit, a little bit of that Lambo magic, uh, and and of course the the one thing that we haven't mentioned. This is a fierce rivalry game. I don't know if Minnesota Green Bay gets the respect it deserves as being one of the fiercest rivalries in the league, but uh, I I think Green Bay is going to win this game and they're they're going to stay alive here. Yeah, I, I also pick Green Bay just because, like you said, Minnesota they've. They haven't been really impressive. I know they're eleven and zero in uh, close close games, uh, but uh, you brought up the Philly game. They got dominated in that game, um, and Dallas, the Dallas game shocked me because I thought that was going to be a really close game, um, and it was nothing close about it. <laughs> um, and uh, like you said, being down thirty three nothing to a team like the Colts, and we've seen how awful the Colts look. Um, so I think Aaron Rodgers, he's at home. It's just no way I see the Packers eliminate. I mean, the Vikings eliminating the Packers at home. Um, Justin Jefferson, we know he's the numbers he's putting up are just not real. I think he's going to be the the first receiver to go over 2000 yards. Um, because he's just ridiculous. Uh, week in and week out, he's just putting up some crazy numbers. Uh, so I think this could be a shootout. Um, cause we know the, the Vikings, their secondary isn't very good. Now they have a great front four, um, linebackers are really good, but that secondary, I think if Aaron Rodgers has some time, uh, Christian Wat- Watson is starting to figure it out. Uh, Randall Cobb, he's been with Aaron Rodgers for forever. So I, I think like you said, I think they can get some Lambo magic and I think uh, the Packers keep their playoff hopes alive for another week. Um, we got the Battle of L.A. We got the Los Angeles, Los Angeles Rams uh, at the Los Angeles Chargers. Um, so Baker Mayfield is two and zero against the AFC West so far. Um, now he's played two of the worst teams in the AFC West. <laughs> um, he hasn't dealt with the top uh, top of the AFC West. Uh, so Matthew is Baker Mayfield gonna go to three and zero against the AFC West, or is Justin Herbert uh gonna put a halt to that? No, I don't think Baker and the Rams are gonna win this game, but this is a big game, and I know it got flexed out of the Sunday night slot, and we know why. But this is still a big game for the Chargers, and, and it's the Battle of LA, which isn't you know, you wouldn't think the Rams Chargers is a big rivalry, but I guess now it kind of has to be considered one. But uh, this is a big game for the Chargers because, and with absolutely no disrespect to Jacksonville or Tennessee, 
there is a real arms race right now between Baltimore and the Chargers to get that five seed because it's pretty clear in the AFC, the top three, Buffalo, Kansas City, Cincinnati, is just on another level. Uh, and all three of those teams are well ahead and much better than either uh, Jacksonville or Tennessee. So whoever gets that five seed, they still have to go on the road and they're going to have to beat a playoff team. It's not going to be easy, but whoever gets the five seed gets to go to either Tennessee or Jacksonville. Whoever ends up as the six seed is going to have to either go to Buffalo, Kansas City or Cincinnati. Woo! <laughs> it's pretty it's pretty clear what the more favorable spot there is. So yes. big game for the Chargers. They're a game behind Baltimore right now in the race for that five spot. We're about to talk about Baltimore uh in our next game. But Big game for the Chargers. They're not in any position to rest any starters, which I think is good for them. I think Herbert and the Chargers are going to go out and uh, they're going to control this game. Uh, the Rams are going to put up a good fight just like they have since Baker became the quarterback uh, with the games against Vegas, Green Bay, and we know what the Denver game was. Uh, but I think they're going to come out and give a good fight. I don't think the Chargers are going to blow them out, but I think the Chargers do win. And But by the way, the last couple of weeks, all of a sudden, I've been hearing everybody in the media and all the Twitter people saying, well, "Justin Herbert, uh, he doesn't have any touchdown passes. Uh, I don't. Maybe we do. Maybe we shouldn't be calling Justin Herbert a good quarterback anymore." Shut up! <laughs> <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> because the Chargers, first off, have been running the ball extremely well of late with uh, all the backs they have, particularly uh, Eckler, but. To all of this garbage about uh, Justin Herbert hasn't thrown a touchdown pass lately, and uh, hush, they've been running the ball so well, they haven't been throwing the ball of late. Stop that garbage. Justin Herbert is still an extremely good quarterback, one of the best young quarterbacks that we have in the league right now. Stop that mess. Uh we're, we're going to see Justin Herbert show out in the playoffs, I think. And I think we're, he's going to have a good game on Sunday as well as the Chargers beat the Rams. Yes, I, um, I'm really excited that the Chargers locked up a playoff spot. Now, obviously, they got to play the Colts and Nick Foles, what's, what's left of Nick Foles. But they're in the playoffs again for the first time since 2018. I'm really excited to see Justin Herbert in the playoffs because Justin Herbert is one of the most exciting young quarterbacks in the league. Some of the throws and some of the stuff he pulls off, it's just ridiculous. Like that throw to Keenan Allen a couple of weeks ago, I have no idea how he completed no. that ball. Um, so I'm really excited to see them in the playoffs. And that's why I took the Chargers in this game, because like you said, they're fighting for playoff seeding. Uh, they're right there neck and neck with Baltimore. And it's kind of like in the NFC. Um, it's like the Cowboys. You really don't want Philly to kind of collapse because <laughs> you want to go to the – you want to go to the whoever wins the NFC going south, you know, whoever wins out that division, you want to be sitting right there. Now, obviously, like you said, it's not going to be easy to go on the road, but it's a favorable matchup than having to go to uh, maybe San Francisco or maybe a rematch with Minnesota. You know, it's more favorable than that. Um, so, so the Chargers, you know, they're going to win this game and hope maybe Baltimore loses one of these last two games because they have the Bengals next week and the Steelers game Sunday we're about to talk about that very shortly that's not going to be easy because the Steelers still have a slim chance of making the playoffs so um, the Chargers I think they'll take care of business at home uh, it's going to be a very exciting game Baker and the Rams they're going to play hard uh, he's you know he's done really decent since he's taken over um, he's, he's loved throwing to Higby and Skoranek and, uh, Jefferson and, you know, he's made the best of what he has, you know, the offensive line isn't very good. So I think that can be kind of concerning going up against the Chargers, Khalil Mack and things like that. But yeah, the Chargers, they'll win and, uh, we'll have to see how the seeding plays out. Um, so now let's talk about our Sunday night game. Cause it's a lot on the line with this one. Uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Baltimore Ravens. Uh, Matthew, how do you see this one playing out? There's so much on the line. Well, as I said earlier, I really think uh, New York and Seattle should have been the game that was put on Sunday night uh, when they flexed out 
the Rams and Chargers game. I think this is a very lazy selection by NBC. They're, they're kind of just falling back on the rivalry aspect of this game and the classics that they've had of yesteryear. Uh, so I'm disappointed that this is the game we're stuck with on Sunday night because I, I just don't see much pizzazz about this game. First mm -hmm. off, the Steelers, I, I put the Steelers and the Patriots in the same bucket. I, I, I don't want to see them make the playoffs. And it's not because I dislike New England or I dislike Pittsburgh. I just, I, I don't think they're going to put up any kind of a battle because again, whoever gets that seven seed in the uh, AFC is going Good to have luck. to go <laughs> to Buffalo, Kansas city or Cincinnati. And I don't <laughs> think the Steelers or Patriots stand a chance to even make those games close. I think Miami does stand a chance. So I'm really wanting Miami to get that spot over a new England or a Tennessee or Pittsburgh. I'd even like to see the jets over all of those teams. Um, so but, but Pittsburgh is not good to begin with. Um, that was my concern when we added this extra playoff spot in is, are we letting in two teams, one from each conference that just don't deserve to be in um, and well, we've seen Pittsburgh last year. They were in that spot, right? And they went to uh, Kansas city and they got killed. Um, we, we, <laughs> we even seen that the first year that they, uh, got the extra playoff spot, Chicago got in and they were horrible and they went to new Orleans and got killed. So you, you get the point of where I'm going with this, but Pittsburgh's just not good. They beat Las Vegas last week. Good for you. Thanks for playing. Um, Las Vegas always gives up leads, and Pittsburgh was never going to lose that game on the 50th anniversary of the Immaculate Reception, and then you add in Franco Harris's uh, death. Um, and then and then on the Baltimore side, probably not going to have Lamar Jackson again. I'm guessing it's going to be Tyler Huntley. Now, listen, I think Tyler Huntley should be a starter somewhere. I think he's that good, but he doesn't bring in any – prime time pizzazz to the game just a little bit disappointed that this is the sunday night game i think the ravens win though i hope the ravens win because again i don't want to see the steelers sniffing the playoffs <laughs> um i think it's gonna be like when they played it was like two or three weeks ago it's gonna be like a 16 to 14 game yeah uh, the, the steelers uh i think they need an offensive coordinator because they don't really put up a lot of points um baltimore's defense is been playing really well lately um so I, I mean this doesn't really bring the same excitement that it used to bring the Steelers Ravens rivalry I mean it's still a great rivalry but it's just not really going to be exciting because I don't think Lamar is going to play until you know they slide that check across the table uh, <laughs> so um I, I I hope he comes back for the playoffs because Baltimore without Lamar they're not going to be very exciting to look at and um, like you said, um, Chiefs, Bengals, Bills. We're about to talk about Bengals, Bills, and the classic that they're going to play on Monday Night Football. Um, all three of those teams, good offenses. Buffalo and the Bengals have really good defenses. The Chiefs, I think their defense is so so, but you're going to need a score to keep up with these teams. Uh, and Pittsburgh, and like you said, the Patriots, uh, they just don't have enough offense to keep up with these teams. So I don't want to see either one of them in the playoffs. So Baltimore, please handle business at home. Uh, Cause yeah, Pittsburgh in the playoffs. Uh, I, I don't want to see that again, especially against any of those top three teams. So please Baltimore handle your business at home. And to close out our NFL slate, the game of the week, potentially the game of the year. Um, we're going to the jungle. Um, the Buffalo Bills at the Cincinnati Bengals. Who, Matthew, how do you see this classic, um, potential classic playing out? Um, it's a lot on the line in this game. So how do you see this one playing out? Well, first off, this is going to be just a terrific Monday. You're going to be able to start it with the Cotton Bowl, Tulane, and USC. Uh, you're going to be able to then go to the Rose Bowl in Pasadena, California, uh, the classic game that that always is, and it's going to be a good game this year with Penn State and Utah. And then you go straight from the Rose Bowl to this game, Bills and Bengals, and I'm what a what a game! My gosh, 
it, it does have the potential to be a regular season classic, and we certainly hope it is uh, between these two quarterbacks and these two teams that are clearly Super Bowl contenders. There is great urgency on the part of Buffalo to win this game. Uh, we have seen the last two years Buffalo in the playoffs have to go to Kansas City and they haven't won. Now we know what happened last year. They very easily could have won that game. They should have won that game after taking the lead with 13 seconds left. But the fact of the matter is that the last two years, they have been in Kansas City in the playoffs and they're 0-2 in those games. So you look at this game, Buffalo is 12-3, and Kansas City is 12-3. and Buffalo did win against the Chiefs in the regular season, so they have the tiebreaker. Buffalo really needs that number one seed, not even as much as for the bye, but just for the home field advantage, uh, especially if they do indeed play in the championship game, either Kansas City or Cincinnati. Having home field advantage would be enormous. So they need to win this game because if they lose, now Cincinnati still has a shot at the number one seed, but it's, not, but it's not likely. Mm. Uh, it's going to be unless all hell breaks loose, it's going to be either Buffalo or Kansas City. Well, if Buffalo loses this game to Cincinnati, and as we know, Kansas City is going to beat Denver, then we would go to Week 18, and all Kansas City would need to do to get the top seed is beat the Raiders, which obviously they're going to be heavily favored to do. So the Bills cannot afford to lose this game. Uh, and I think that's going to be a big reason why they do win it. I, I think they're going to look at this game and say, it's not life or death if we lose, but we really got to win this game. I think that's how they're going to go about this game. Now, Cincinnati's not going to care about any of that. <laughs> no. <laughs> Cincinnati just, uh, you don't get the feeling Cincinnati cares much about anything, right? You kind of get the feeling they just go in, wanting to win every game, wanting to play every game as hard as possible. Joe Burrow's going to throw for 350 yards and all these touchdowns, and they just want to go have fun and win games. And that's probably how they're going to play here. But I do think the intensity level to win the game for Buffalo is going to carry them to the win here. Um, but, yeah, Cincinnati at home is not going to be easy to beat. Ask Patrick Mahomes in Kansas City. Ask everybody how easy it is to go to Cincinnati and win. But I, I think Buffalo is going to win just because the intensity and urgency they uh, are going to have to win this game uh, to get close uh, to wrapping up that number one seed. Yeah, um, that's really the reason why I took Buffalo. Um, I was going back and forth all day about who I thought was going to win this game because the Bengals, they've looked really good on both sides of the ball lately. Um, now I am concerned because sometimes Josh Allen and Buffalo, they kind of have some turnover issues and you turn the ball over against Joe Burrow like they can do at times, it, they'll be in big trouble. Um, but like you said, <clears throat> they need the AFC championship game in Buffalo if they were to get back to the AFC championship game because going on the road has not worked in their favor. So who knows, maybe playing in a downpouring blizzard in Buffalo <laughs> may work in their favor because um, uh, the snow they've been getting up there is ridiculous. So <laughs> maybe playing Patrick Mahomes or Joe Burrow in a blizzard may work in their favor. <laughs> um, but I think this is going to be a really good game. Um, like I said, Cincinnati, they've really just been clicking. And, uh, uh, ooh, yeah, but I, like you said, I think Buffalo, they're going to treat this as – we need to handle our business because if we look at who the Chiefs have, they're not going to lose either of their last two games. Uh, so we got to handle business uh, Monday night in Cincinnati. It's not going to be easy, but I think this is going to be a really exciting game. But, yeah, Buffalo, <laughs> if they want to get to the Super Bowl in Glendale, uh, they need that home field advantage. So it's a must that they win this game Monday night. And that's really cool because we got the Rose Bowl. Like you said, we got the Cotton Bowl. Then we go to the Rose Bowl. And then we get this classic. Man, uh, I can't wait for Monday, man. It's it's going to be it's a good day if you're a football fan. I clear. Um, 
So, uh, as promised, to close out the show, uh, we're going to talk about our favorite sports moments of the year. Uh, so, Matthew already knows where I'm going with mine, so I'll let him go first and see what he picks for his. <laughs> I don't know if I do know what, where you're going, actually, uh, but... Uh, but... <laughs> Is this supposed to be favorite, like our favorite, or is this supposed to be what we deem the biggest? Um, You can do your favorite. Well, I was going to do my favorite. So, I mean, if you want to do the biggest or your favorite, however you want to do it. Okay. Well, I I guess in some, well, I guess that might have been a stupid question to ask, because I guess, I guess mine would be both. I guess it would be my favorite moment and the biggest moment. And I think it just happened uh, a couple of weeks ago, the World Cup final. Uh, between Argentina and France uh, in just a fabulous World Cup final. For my money, the best World Cup final we've ever seen uh, with Lionel Messi and Angel Di Maria, combined age of 69, putting Argentina 2-0 ahead in the first half, and then the freight train that is Kylian Mbappe in France coming back with Mbappe uh, scoring twice to drag it to extra time. Then in extra time, Messi scoring again. Then Mbappe scoring again. Mbappe with a hat trick in the World Cup final. Crazy. Age 23. And then it being decided on penalties, which, of course, Argentina won uh, with the brilliance of Emmy Martinez in goal and Lionel Messi finally getting his World Cup title. So that, that would be my vote. Argentina and France in the World Cup final. It was... An instant, instant classic, and uh, I, I had the absolute pleasure of calling it, and I, I oh, couldn't believe my eyes, and I still can't believe it, watching and thinking about it. Now, that was a classic moment. It was a classic game, but for me, um, as a North Carolina basketball fan, uh, I think it's going to be hard to top uh, the two moments that we had First, we y- ruined... y'all losing the national championship game to Kansas was indeed a big moment. I tell you, <laughs> uh, giving up the biggest lead in championship game history. That's a great pick, Keith. You uh, great job. Uh, I wasn't going to go there. Um, well, first, I was going to start with us ruining Coach K's retirement party, beating him in his last home game. Uh, that That's just a moment I think it's going to be hard to talk uh, for me. You didn't me. ruin it. North Carolina didn't ruin it. Uh, well, beating him in his last home game, I feel like that that was just big. Um, and then in the and then in the final four, uh, Caleb Love hitting the dagger shot that ended Coach K's career. Uh, as a North Carolina fan, those two games, it's hard to that, pick. That moment, one. by the way, that, that did not end Coach K's career. By the way, but you know, I mean, the the shot was the dagger, but you know, um, but 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 that game did not end Coach K's career. The the final the I mean the that was his last game at Duke right in New Orleans well, well well sure but yeah but that didn't end Coach K's career Coach K ended his career when he announced his retirement North Carolina didn't do that uh well you know he did announce his retirement before the season and then his last game was against North Carolina so you know that's where I was going with that but that's what that's what be my top sports moment so far now if the Cowboys is going and win the Super Bowl. That may be my top moment for next well, that, year. Well, that wouldn't be this year. So, <laughs> yeah, I mean, but I'm and, just thinking, and that's that... not, and that's not reality either. Cowboys haven't <laughs> won a Super Bowl in my lifetime, so that's not reality. <laughs> Mine either. So maybe that'd be something where I don't have to put in a VH tape <laughs> to see the Cowboys win a Super Bowl. That'd be nice to <laughs> to experience that. So, um, glad we could have a little fun with that. Um, and Matthew, my brother, thank you again for taking time out of your busy schedule to join us on the show. Uh, I had fun the last hour uh, talking about the college football playoffs, and we predicted all the NFL games. It was fun, my brother. Yeah, I can't wait. And uh, happy new year to you and yours as well. I uh, ho- hope it's a prosperous new year for you. Same to you, my brother. I'm pretty sure we'll be in touch uh, between now and then. Oh, yes. <laughs>